The whole thing centers around the word integration. Well, as Mr. Myers said, because his home has been anything but peaceful since he moved in. He's got three children, and uh, evidently he feels that they will be accepted socially. And uh, I don't feel that they ever will be. But the whole trouble with this integration business is that uh, in the end, it probably will end up with, with mixing socially. And you will have, well, I think their aim is mixed marriages and becoming equal with the whites. Zoning in the town of Lincoln is pretty simple. Higher-end homes are zoned R1 or residential one. Business is zoned IC for industrial commercial. And in between those two is R2 for residential two. In 2011, a committee of ordinary citizens updating our zoning. The process wasn't rocket science. In fact, the zoning committee erred in favor of R1 to protect home values. When the final draft was presented to the town board, a town council person who lived in a mobile home fought to expand R2 zoning. Mobile homes are allowed in R2 areas. By the time the committee finished its work, the majority of the committee had lost interest, leaving one single person to finish the work. What we have today is a real zoning mess. Some of our town's most expensive homes are in R2 districts. That means if you own a multi-million dollar mansion, it's perfectly legal for someone to put a modular or mobile home next door to you. The town planning board is currently considering revisiting zoning. At first glance, Booyah Road seems to be an ideal place to build a new home. One farm there has been for sale for a decade. The only buyer that could be found is another farmer. Another property there has been for sale for 18 months months and no buyer can be found. Those of us who live in Lincoln know the reason. The area is zoned industrial commercial. In addition to the dump, there's an unsightly water tower, a solar farm, a town highway garage, and a fire training building. A second water tower and two chemical plants have been proposed there. On average, new homes cost $284,000 to build, according to Google. Bankers don't want to invest in upscale housing when there are so many negatives in the neighborhood. When the ARE park was proposed, one possible use the county proposed was a mobile home park. Most people don't want to live in such places as Booyah Road. However, there is one person that does want to live there. His name is Bruce Chantel. We checked into the land and uh, contacted the people that owned it and they said, told us we are, they are, have always had a trailer on here. And so instead of getting a lawyer, I just contacted Dennis Fields, a code enforcer. I said, who better to know than the code enforcer? So I contacted him a couple of times, and he said, yes, the trailer is okay there. It's just grandfathered in. The trailer's always been there. And so we uh, just started working on the land. We cleared some trees out. We uh, went and and bought a mobile home to put on the land and he told us what year it had to be and all that stuff and how he wanted it. So I talked to him for a little over three months. I've got the cell phone record where I contacted him and uh, I wanted to, for they previously had a trailer, there was a hedgerow, a tree going right down through the property. I wanted to remove the hedgerow, remove the uh, gravel pad over about 30 foot. And I contacted him about that and he told me, yeah, that'd be fine to move it over as long as I put the pad in to specs and I drew up uh, a plan for him to what I was doing about it, where I was putting it and how I was doing it. And over the phone, he said, no problem, it, it looked good. I drew up a sketch, just, and I'm no artist, I just drew up a sketch on a piece of paper where the trailer is going to set, where I wanted to move the, the pad used to be, and where I wanted to put the pad, and uh, where the trailer is going to set, and, and porches and whatever, put that all on a paper for him, and turn that into him, but not to him, into the downtown office. Yeah, the first time... We uh, submitted uh, application for the permits to uh, move in. They said they lost them. 
and that was in uh, in between. I guess one woman, one lady quit, and another one was coming in. The town clerk, yeah, from the town of Lincoln. And so the first one was lost, and so they had they had us refile another one. So we we did that and took it down there, and then this I guess the second lady, she went out on maternity leave. So we never never did hear anything about the permits to do any of the work. But Dennis kept telling us, Dennis Fields kept telling us to go ahead and do what we had to do to get it livable, and we were straightening all that out later. Before I got it all the way done, he uh, told, just told me that the town had changed their mind, that, they couldn't ha that I could not have a trailer on her. And then after that, Dennis Fields sent us a uh, a violation notice. There was an illegal trailer, and a notice to vacate. Yeah, so after uh, that, I feel sent me the eviction notice and auto compliance notice. And after the deadline had passed, because I didn't have nothing to do or couldn't no place to go, out of the blue, uh, Darren Ball called me and asked me if I could get down to the town and put in an application for a variance. He said, and, uh, he said that he couldn't guarantee it, he said, but they think. He thought that they would pass a variance for me. So I went to the variance board after I paid $75 for the application. And when we got there, the uh, head of the meeting opened the meeting and uh, explained what the problem was. And he said he did, they couldn't do nothing about it. <laughs> The idea that a Zoning Board of Appeals cannot hear an application for a use variance is truly laughable. Here's why. New York State mandates four hours of training per person per year. There's five ZBA members. The ZBA has been around since 2011 or 16 years. Four times, five times 16 is 320 hours of training. We're expected to believe that the ZBA, after 320 hours of training, was unable to figure out that they did in fact have authority to hear use variance applications. Here's a few seconds of the state mandated training. Authority to vary the provisions of the zoning law is granted to zoning boards of appeals by town law, village law, and general city law. These laws require that a municipality with zoning must have a zoning board of appeals. The board acts as a safety valve to keep the zoning restrictions from being overly rigid. The Zoning Board of Appeals exists primarily for its appellate functions in which it acts as a buffer for aggrieved applicants between decisions of the Zoning Enforcement Officer and the State Supreme Court. ZBAs are granted two appellate functions, a review of applications for use and area variances, 
and the power to render interpretations of the zoning regulations. Then after that, Doug Holdridge, the ex-judge, he sat up in the judge's seat and he took over the meeting and said, and told us, me and my wife, that <coughs> there was nothing that that board could do for us. That uh, it, was, uh, it was already zoned and we couldn't have a trailer there. That was all there was to it. And I asked him <coughs> what was the next step I could go through. And he said, there is no next step. This is the last thing you can do. You're done. You have to pack up and leave. That's exactly what he told us. The town attorney said publicly that the ZBA should have heard Bruce's matter. Yeah, well, but I'm asking you, the town, which, who do I go to? These guys, he just told me I can't do it. Uh, Darren and Ball sent me to the variance board after their meeting, and the variance board said they had absolutely nothing to do with my situation. Did so you file went, an application? Yes, I did. It cost me 75 hours. Yeah. I, I don't know what's happened, but you went to the correct board. I don't know what's happened since. Who's it's only Board of Appeals. That's what that's the answer. I'm like, who's that? Did you have a that's the board. Board. board of Appeals? That's the variance board. That is the variance board. Right. Which they told me they had nothing to do with my situation. Wait, doesn't my father have the right to a fair trial? Oh, you Americans with your due process and fair trials. <laughs> this is always so much easier in Mexico. Lincoln Town Councilman Doug Holdridge spoke at length during the ZBA meeting, even though the state of New York prohibits legislators from influencing independent boards. Doug was heard by 10 people in the room to clearly and concisely state they can move property lines a few feet here and there, but they cannot consider your case. What Doug described was the ZBA was allowed to consider area variances, but not use variances. New York law is clear. Without a zoning board that can consider both use variances and area variances, Lincoln has not had zoning since at least 2011 to the present. One former councilman said that in 2017, the ZBA was in fact authorized to hear both and the entire board voted to authorize the ZBA to hear Bruce's case. If that's true, why did Doug Holdridge tell a room full of people only a few days later that the ZBA is only authorized to hear area variances and not use variances? There are only two ways this can play out, neither of which is good for the town. If a judge rules that the ZBA was not authorized by the town board to hear Bruce's matter, Bruce wins and the town loses big time. Every zoning action, every application to the town, and every enforcement action can be overturned. The town might have to refund monies from applications from 2011 to the present. But what if the judge rules that the ZBA was in fact duly authorized to hear Bruce's matter? In that case, Doug Holdridge might be removed from office by New York State for obstruction for interfering in governmental administration during the ZBA meeting. If the town's attorney argues that the ZBA was in fact empowered to hear Bruce's case, the town attorney would have opened the town to a lawsuit that it could never win. By Holdridge interfering in the ZBA meeting, his actions would most likely be deemed as misrepresentation, deception, fraud, or affirmative misconduct. There's one logical compromise. If the town passes a resolution grandfathering Bruce's property one time only, that's the end of the matter. Hey, you want to see something stupid? This is my property behind me. It's zone, they say it's zone AR1. You cannot have a mobile home. I just stepped forward about nine feet. It's zone AR2. My neighbors can have a mobile home. I don't understand that. You want to see it again?
Nine feet back. Air one. Nine feet forward. Air two. 